Hello learners, welcome to this session. Today we are going to discuss about air quality impact assessment. Previously we have studied air quality analysis. Before going into the details of the air quality impact analysis, we have to start to describe the air quality assessment tool which is developed by the EPA to relate lead emissions to ambient lead concentrations. Then we will explain how this tool was used to estimate the air quality impacts of each hypothetical emissions of the control strategy. So before going into the details of this also, I would like to provide some impacts on the air quality. The first impact on the air quality because of the air pollutants are the greenhouse effect. We all know that we have studied at length also regarding the greenhouse effect. So it is a well known phenomenon globally today due to its significance in global climate change we know that. So we will discuss about all the ill effects of the unprecedented increase in the greenhouse gases that is a carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide and also water vapor. So it is increased greenhouse gases do not cause any direct human health effect but ecological impairment is also there. It indirectly contributes to the global warming because the start of the industrial revolution some of the anthropogenic activities that have contributed significantly to an increased concentration of greenhouse gases because the usage of fossil fuels are high in nature and usage of fossil fuels that discharge large amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and deforestation is also one of the major root cause for this one and the burning of forest and grasslands that are transformed into the cropland. So forest and grasslands which are cleared are burned to transform them into the cropland. So burning of biomass that generates large amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So burning and clearing of forests that also reduce vegetation that absorbs carbon dioxide through photosynthesis mechanism. And the third point is the cultivation of rice and paddies and use of inorganic fertilizers. So in this one the cultivation of rice and paddy crops that produces methane and usage of the fertilizers that discharges nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. So now another impact we have to see that ozone in troposphere and also its impacts. We have studied and understood about the ozone. It is a stratospheric region. It is present and it protects the life on earth from the sun's ultraviolet rays. So at ground level higher concentrations of the ozone are definitely poisonous to human beings and plants that causes an irritation effect in the respiratory tract and lungs. So in the lower atmosphere that is a tropospheric region the chemical reactions that occurs between the air pollutants from the vehicular uh, fuels or motor gasoline vapors or uh, exhaust from the vehicles and also emissions that create ozone. So high ozone level concentration and also the other oxidants like uh, uh, peroxyacetyl nitrate that causes a threat to human beings and also ecosystems health in several cities of the United States it is already significantly mentioned. In some cities also globally the inactive meteorological episodes with minimum air exchange are already encountered and also mostly influenced. So the ozone problem has become more expensive as well as extensive because transportation emissions have increased exponentially. Exposure to 50 ppm of ozone for many hours will definitely cause the mortality because of the pulmonary edema that is a condition which is characterized by the uh, accumulation of fluid in lungs. At lower levels of ozone causes a non-lethal accumulation of fluid in lungs and also harming the lung capillaries. So young children are at more risk to ozone exposure than adults. Both ozone as well as the pan proceed, produce free radicals. So ozone is also a greenhouse gas that absorbs infrared radiation and re-emits it as a radiation at, at 
energy levels which is equals to about 18 degree centigrade. So this indicates that there is a minimal impact of ozone at temperatures that encountered at the surface. Ozone is also considered as a more efficient greenhouse gas at the tropopause where the temperatures ranging between minus 60 degrees to minus 80 degrees centigrade. And the third impact of air pollutants are the acid rain. So acid rain was first observed in 1852 in England and also they discovered of the relationship between the atmospheric pollution and the acid rain. So in broadly we can say that the acid rain is a combination of wet and dry deposition from the atmosphere that consists of more than normal amounts of sulfuric and nitric acid. So the chemicals are the forerunners of the acid rain formation which are formed from the decaying of vegetation and volcanoes and also man-made sources. The man-made sources that are uh, uh, we can say that nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide and uh, they are caused out of the combustion of the fossil fuels. So main contributors to the acid rain is also known as the precursors. They are the common air pollutants like nitrogen oxide or nitric oxide or nitrogen dioxide. So now we will see that how we can assess the air quality. So to assess the air quality impact of the hypothetical emission controls implemented under the final the uh, national ambient air quality that is a EPA would ideally use a detailed air quality model that simulates the dispersion and transport of lead to estimate local ambient lead concentrations. Even though models with such capabilities are available for pollutants for which EPA frequently conducts air quality analysis that is a particulate matter and ozone. So regional scale models are also there and uh, sometimes they are not appropriate and dispersion or uh, plume based models are also recommended for the compliance with the uh, lead measurement with the NAAQS. So the risk assessment and case studies are also have been taken into consideration. But the dispersion models are the data intensive and more appropriate for local scale analysis of emissions from individual sources. It was not feasible to conduct a large scale data intensive analysis because the simplified analysis developed by the uh, some of the researchers by distance weighting individual source contributions to the ambient lead concentrations. They could not account for such locally critical variables as meteorology and source stock height. Instead of using a data intensive model approach, EPA developed a more simplified air quality assessment tool to estimate the air quality impacts of each lead emission control strategy. So in general, air quality analysis, analysis conducted in support of the current agency of this one and focused on the lead monitoring suspended particulate matter in the air quality system. So the air quality system database with sufficient two or three years data that records monitoring records the concentrations of the levels of lead. So for this particular analysis there is a maximum monitors that is exceeding the lowest alternative target that is a level uh, that is a 0 0.01 milli micrograms we can say that the identification of the maxima monitors as well as the subsequent processing will be based on the alternative uh, forms and the second uh, maximum monthly that is also the average of uh, two to three years period we have to take and specifically they have identified that identified and the concentrations have been analyzed uh, and then described the air quality assessment tool. So this assessment tool employs a source appointment approach to estimate the extent to which each of the emission sources contribute to the observed lead concentrations in the proximate area. So in the step one, they estimate the baseline air quality value drawing from the uh, two to three years, uh, uh, the review database and the uh, air quality assessment tool records the second maximum monthly mean ambient lead concentration for the 24 monitor uh, uh, locations and then this uh, concentration is also exceeds 0.1 uh, milli uh, micrograms 
uh, we can say that uh, in the cubic meter. So the most stringent of the uh, NAA QS alternatives considered in this uh, uh, project we can say that. So these concentrations are adjusted for the expected implementation of the motor accident claims tribunal that is a MACT that controls implemented after 2002 itself. So PM 2.5 NAX controls includes uh, as a part of the uh, example of a PM 2.5 control strategy that describes in the PM 2.5 uh, NAX RAA and also controls the um, uh, lead emissions and the baseline air quality values for this analysis. And for the final rule, the specification of the baseline air quality values that differ from the proposed rule in, uh, in both the ways. In first, we can consider that they will uh, in some areas monitor geo coordinates and ambient lead concentrations data were adjusted to reflect the air quality monitor with the limiting value of the alternative NAX form of the second maximum monthly of these uh, lead concentrations average. And for the proposed rule analysis, so they have incorrectly used the geo coordinates and ambient lead uh, concentration data from the monitor in each geographic area of analysis with the highest maximum uh, monthly uh, lead concentrations average rather than the monitor with the highest second maximum monthly average. So in the most of the areas the limiting of monitoring for the same uh, forms are the three monitor areas have been. Uh, changed and the air quality monitors are also have been changed. So the monitor location is also changed, the set of sources with the emissions affecting each monitor area also have been changed to reflect the new range of influence that is surrounding the new monitoring locations. So because the standards of this lead especially the concentrations in the particular area that is a RIA that is a regulatory impact analysis is not considered in this analysis. So monitors with lead concentrations which exceeding only the standard that is a monitors with the second maximum monthly uh, averages between the 0.05 uh, millimicrons uh, micrograms and also the uh, between 0.05 to 0.01 uh, then they are excluded from the analysis. So the number of monitor locations analyzed has been decreased from 36 in, uh, uh, in the proposed study to 21. So this is a motor accident claims tribunal is also controlled by so many measures. So that means for most point sources lead emissions as specified in 2002 national emission inventory. It is served as the base for the case emissions uh, and for the uh, in 2006 uh, 16 also they have analyzed. So there is a there is a no growth factors were applied to the 2002 emissions that estimates for the industrial sources to generate the emissions uh, the which estimates which compare with the 2016. So in general we can say that lead emissions from the sources of categories that is are trending downward over time due to various factors like lack of growth in particular industrial sectors, implementation of alternative lower emitting production practices uh, and also the recent regulations which are also definitely have the impact. In another step there is an estimate background lead concentration is also there. It estimates average background lead concentration is so small uh, and it is irrelevant for the purpose of the analysis. So, so this is one of the analysis and how it will be useful for the air quality assessment tool that assumes the background lead concentrations and also the uh, how it will violate the contributions and the design value of the monitors. So in step 3 also there is a one more it is there in fact it is an uh, it is a uh, in the category the estimation of contribution of miscellaneous uh, that is uh, present in the dust. Although the lead emissions are uh, the miscellaneous um, re-entered uh, uh, re-entrained dust category and also uncertain origin. So they may be a uh, re entrained dust emitted from the past stationary or the past mobile sources like uh, leaded gas normally and uh, the contribution from the transport or the dust emitted from the demolition, construction uh, or uh, sand blasting uh, activities and uh, un uh, inventoried mobile related emissions. So like uh, lead wheel weights and brake wear and uh, trace lead from gasoline or diesel or the tube oil uh, consumption. 
So these are the some of the factors which uh, enters, uh, which which gives a real picture about how lead as a pollutant in the uh, environment. So now we will uh, understand the impacts of development projects like uh, new industrial operations like uh, expansion or uh, mining, highway, harbour, power plants and uh, metallurgy. So there are various stages of the projects are categorized and air quality impact assessment is carried out all stages of the project to suggest appropriate mitigatory measures. So in general impact assessment studies that are carried out in pre-construction stage or construction stage, operation stage and post-operation stage. And the worst case impacts that is based on the preliminary that is a developmental opinion and also to be carried out using air quality models. So the major sources of air pollution that have to be identified during the construction and operating stage. The sources of air pollutants at the different phases of the developments like construction phase construction works in that include the uh, site clearance obviously it will takes place and site formation building works infrastructure provision and any other infrastructure activities have to be taken care of so the major temporary air pollution is dust generated as a result of these construction works obviously and the second phase is the operational phase so in this one the major permanent source of air pollutant is the chimney emissions and also vehicular emissions from the traffic on major roads and the air pollutants uh, emitted from the, the vicinity of the industrials as well as the sources which are and also the chimneys uh, emitted from the industries and also the emissions which are associated with the nearby industries uh, and also the stationary air pollutant sources. And other uh, major uh, criteria is also there that is a meteorology and the topography. So the topography and the terrain conditions of this study area and air shed and the meteorological parameters they are also plays a very crucial role in the determining the air quality. The wind direction uh, at that particular time that also determines the general area in which a mass of gas or cloud of particles will move. So the wind speed closely relates to how rapidly the contaminant will advance into that area. And uh, for example, if you will see the hilly area or mountain range, so they may deflect the air flow either horizontally or vertically or sometimes both. So the amount of deflection depending upon the vertical stability of the atmosphere also matters. In valleys, the wind carrying a pollutant that tends to flow either up or downward valley. That is also is one of the factors. So the deeper the valley, the more pronounced the channeling effect is there. So Dear learner, I would like to conclude with this one. So we have seen how the air impact analysis has been taken care of with an example of lead we have seen and also some other measurements how the meteorological factors also influence the air quality analysis. In the next session, we will come up with some more details about the environmental impact assessment. Thank you.